Hi, this is Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. Today I want to look at the mysteries of light, the luminous mysteries proposed by John Paul II when he was Pope in 2002 in the, the encyclical or the apostolic letter Rosarium Virginis Marie. Some Catholics don't accept these mysteries and won't pray them, don't like to use them at all. In this video, I want to look at whether they're right, whether they're wrong, what our approach should be to the mysteries of light. To begin with, my first point is going to be a little bit on the history of the rosary. So prior to people praying the rosary as St. Dominic established it in the 13th century, Catholics always use beads to pray with, to keep track of their prayers or just to focus their mind. Some of the desert monks used to use beads. Some of them used to use little knots that they created from bits of yarn in order to, to focus their mind while they were at prayer. Okay, now we jump forward to the time of St. Benedict, the establishing of the monasteries, when we have the psalms sung every day by the monks. They would sing all 150 psalms in one day. And if you were unable to read, then instead you were given a set of beads which had 150 beads on and you would say a prayer on each bead instead of saying the Psalms. I think you must have had a really long prayer because some of the Psalms are long. But anyway, over time that became known as the Angelic Psalter or the Psalter of Our Lady because people on each of those beads was saying the angelic salutation, that is the first part of the Hail Mary. In the Dowie Rames Bible and in the Latin Vulgate Bible, this angelic salutation actually is just put uh, the section on the Annunciation. So in the Dowie Rames, we've got Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. In modern Bibles, they, they say that, that second part Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. It's from St. Elizabeth telling it to Our Lady. Whichever is true, God, God only knows. But in the angelic salutation, both are combined as part of this angelic salutation prayer. And so the monks or whoever was in the, was in the chapel when the Psalms were being sung, they would repeat the angelic salutation prayer 150 times in order to replicate in some way the Psalms, 150 Psalms in the Psalter. In England, we actually have some evidence of these prayer beads because Lady Godiva of Coventry, in the 11th century, bequeathed to a local monastery that she helped found a set of beads, which in her will, she it is described that these beads she used in order to keep track of her prayers and on which she would say the Ave Maria. So we have, we have evidence that this was definitely taking place uh, in England and it was taking place all over the world. We've got pictures of monks holding these beads We've got architectural designs with monks holding beads. So these definitely existed. Now, where does St. Dominic come into it? Because at some, sometimes this is the point in which your modernist, your modernist scripture scholar or church historian will cut in and they will say, oh, therefore the rosary has nothing to do with St. Dominic. It always existed before him and he's got nothing to do with it. But that's not true either. The historical evidence is that St. Dominic did have a large part to play in the evolution of the rosary as we have it today. The inspiration that Our Lady gave St. Dominic was not to pray Hail Marys on a set of beads. Instead, the inspiration Our Lady gave to St. Dominic in order to counter the Albigensian heresy was to get people to meditate on aspects of the history of salvation and then afterwards to say a set of 10 Hail Marys. So St. Dominic had this whole method of preaching where he'd go into a church, he'd lead a meditation on an aspect of Our Lady's life or of salvation or Our Lord's life. And then together, they would all say 10 Hail Marys. And of course, again, at that point, the Hail Mary stopping at blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Even the holy name wasn't, wasn't there at the time of, of St. Dominic. So St. Dominic is responsible for introducing the rosary as a meditative prayer, as a prayer in which for the space of 10 Hail Marys, 
you think about an event from the life of our blessed Lord, our blessed lady, the events of salvation history. It does not seem, it does not seem that St. Dominic was given the exact 15 decades that we use today. Okay, let's back up now because a lot of people are probably not too happy with that that suggestion. But that's what the historic uh, documentation suggests. St. Dominic is responsible for the beads with the, with the 10 Hail Marys, definitely. And with a meditative point for 10 Hail Marys. But the idea that St. Dominic is responsible and that Our Lady gave to St. Dominic an instruction that each set of 10 Hail Marys ought to correspond to the following mystery of her life or the life of her son. That is not the case. That is not the case. I'm going to present now some historical evidence that points to the contrary. Okay, first bit of evidence comes from Father Donald Calloway's book, Champions of the Rosary. In his book, he outlines how there are some image representations of the glorious mysteries that are found in some chapels dating back to the 16th, 17th centuries. And these image representations show the fifth glorious as the final judgment. The fourth glorious is the assumption and coronation linked together. And the fifth glorious is the final judgment. So that's a piece from his book. But another book which really discloses for me, which I read only recently, and it's called Dowry, or rather Our Lady's Dowry, How England Gained the Title. Some of you might know that England has traditionally been known as the Dowry of Mary. And this book, which was published in about 1875, gives you a lot of textual evidence pointing to that the fact that in the 17th century even, it wasn't unanimous, universal, what the mysteries of the rosary were. There were some, there were some areas where there was some disagreement. In particular, there's a lot of debate over what the fourth joyful should be, the fourth joyful mystery. Let me read some quotes from the book. One quotation. I've not been able to find in the authors who have treated of the rosary any ancient documents showing the nature of the meditations attached to the decades from the 13th to 16th century, though they assert that such meditations were in use. I have gleaned, however, some evidence that at least in the 16th century, the mysteries were not precisely those now universally adopted. Stapleton, a famous English theologian writing in Louvain in 1589, happens to mention those in use in his time. The five joyful mysteries were, one, the Annunciation, two, the Visitation, three, the Nativity, four, the Adoration of the Magi, and five, the Confession of Simeon and Anna. The five sorrowful mysteries were one, the circumcision, two, the flight into Egypt, three, the loss of our Lord when 12 years old, four, the crucifixion, and five, the burial. In Stapleton's work, the glorious mysteries were the same as present. A Spanish writer, Father Arias, Society of Jesus, writing towards the end of the 16th century, alludes to the ordinary rosary as containing the following mysteries. The five joyful are, one, the Annunciation, two, the Incarnation, three, the Visitation, four, the Birth, five, the Presentation, with the sorrowful and glorious as the same as those we now select. And finally, he writes, a 17th century author offers 17 authors who give the adoration of the Magi as a fourth joyful, and one who complains of the presentation being added in its place as inappropriate, belonging more to the sorrowful than the joyful mysteries. And I think you, I can kind of see his thinking in that one because the fourth joyful, the presentation, that's got the prophecy of Simeon with the sword of sorrow entering Our Lady's heart. You can kind of get that one. Whereas the adoration of the Magi, that's a purely joyful event, you know, perhaps. And so, so here we have in this book, Our Lady's Dowry, which uh, is an excellent book with loads of information about, about Catholic England and about the history of Catholicism in England and also about the rosary and more generally Marian devotions, it makes it out very clearly that in the 17th century, 16th, 17th century, 
The rosary wasn't fixed in terms of its mysteries. And prior to the 15th century, we don't really have many references. Uh, there's only a few scattered references to what the mysteries of the rosary actually are at all. So the first places in print mentioning what the mysteries of the rosary are, are in disagreement. Uh, so there are the, the method is definitely correct. And I should add here, I want to read a final quote from Our Lady's Dowry because this author concurs how I've just explained things at the beginning on the, the evolution of the rosary. It should be remarked that the old writers did not attribute to St. Dominic either the first suggestion of honouring Our Lady by the angelic salutation or the frequent repetition of this formula or the use of beads to count these repetitions. All these things are found already in common use. St. Dominic arranged them and remodelled them, dividing the Aves into decades or sets of ten, preceded by the Pater and attaching a meditation to each decade. And he propagated this devotion by himself and his children did so far and wide. So therefore, the idea that there are 15 set mysteries with a specific content given by Our Lady to Saint Dominic, we don't have to hold to that. And in fact, it's not really tenable because it, it's not the case. Our Lady inspired Saint Dominic with the meditative method of meditating on a particular mystery and then using the 10 Hail Marys as a pious timing device. You meditate upon this mystery for the duration of 10 Hail Marys. And although over time there came to be a certain uniformity in what the content of the mysteries is, it still is not a total uniformity because even I found in the biography of Sister Lucia Fatima, she presents the mysteries of the rosary in her biography. And actually they differ a little bit from the way that we commonly use them today. She has the fifth joyful mystery as the prayer of Jesus in the temple. It's different. She has the second sorrowful mystery as Jesus is taken prisoner. The third sorrowful mystery she has as the scourging and crowning with thorns. So even in the 19th century, and the, sorry, the 20th century, there wasn't a total uniformity around what the mysteries ought to be. And so we, there's no surprise then that we find in St. Louis-Marie de Montfort that in his set of meditations for the fifth joyful mystery, the finding of the boy Jesus in the temple, he actually, in his suggested idea of what you can meditate during the, the, the ten Hail Marys that make up the finding of the boy Jesus in the temple, he includes all other events from our Lord's life. And I'm going to show a picture of that on screen so you can see that that in St. Louis-Marie de Montfort's suggestion for meditating on the fifth joyful, it actually includes a fair bit of what is now in the mysteries of light. Okay, and so basically there were not 15 specific defined mysteries. So therefore it is not problematic for the Pope to propose another set of five, another five mysteries that actually pick out some of those things that were previously meditated upon that were previously thought about, but in the fixed rosary that probably became really solid in the 18th century, more or less, these extra bits were not fixed. But by that point, the rosary had already changed an awful lot beyond St. Dominic. Because remember, at the time of St. Dominic, the Hail Mary is only half the Mary as Hail Mary as we have it, and it doesn't have the holy name of Jesus in it. So after St. Dominic, we've got the rest of the Hail Mary added. After St. Dominic, we've got the Our Fathers added in between each Hail Mary. We've got the Glory Be added at the end of the decade. We've got a Creed, an Our Father, three Hail Marys and a Glory Be added at the beginning of the Rosary. All of these things gradually added to the Rosary over time. So now the idea that the Rosary is meant to be some copy of the 150 Psalms, it isn't. 
because there's way, there's not 150 beads in the rosary now, there's quite a few more than 150. So it's no longer like that. And it never was like that from the Simon of St. Dominic. His whole point with the rosary was meditation for the duration of 10 Hail Marys. And that's the thing that Our Lady inspired him with. Perhaps Our Lady did give him 10, 15 specific meditations but they've clearly been lost in time and it's become confused because there were so many variations in the 17th century of what these, I won't say so many, I mean they all have the Annunciation in, they all have the Crucifixion, they all have the Resurrection, but there are other areas where there are some disagreements. And so that's why in the 19th century and in the 20th century, there are spiritual writers who are suggesting why not why not define another set of mysteries to expand on the currently existing ones we have saint george preca a maltese saint he proposes five extra mysteries and in fact those are the ones that saint john paul ii chooses to pick up on in his mysteries of light but also we've got independently frank duff the founder of the legion of mary he suggests five additional mysteries and in his suggestion, his are actually a little bit different from the ones that made it to the Mysteries of Light. He gives us, number one, the Immaculate Conception. Number two, the birth of Mary. Number three, the marriage of Mary. Number four, the wedding feast at Cana. And number five, the institution of the Holy Eucharist. He says that would be four fives instead of three fives. This would utilize still more than at present this marvelously psychological and effective method of teaching doctrine, of working it into people's minds, and then of reflecting it back to God as worship. And he gives a little justification, justification for each of his five extra mysteries. The first one, the Immaculate Conception, he says, at the moment, Immaculate Conception does not form one of the 15 uh, mysteries, although it's a foundation of all the privileges of Our Lady. He says the birth of Mary, he says that might be regarded as the first dawning of salvation on earth. The marriage of Mary, he says that meant the constitution of the Holy Family and an immediate preparation for the incarnation, also adding an extra prominence to St. Joseph. And the marriage feast of Cana, he suggests this would be good because it represents the opening of our Lord's mission, which terminated on Calvary. So we have there, according to Frank Duff, his own proposal of what the extra mysteries ought to be. And in the Mysteries of Light, offered to us by Pope John Paul II, we have ultimately Father George Precker's mysteries. But the idea is we are expanding, we're going deeper in the same thing that St. Dominic did. And there's no reason why a Pope cannot propose these five extra mysteries. After all, the Pope does have authority over all liturgical prayers and all official prayers of the Catholic Church. And the Rosary as such is one of those. So there's no reason why he can't add extra elements to the Rosary. Indeed, we've seen in our own live extra bits added to the rosary. The Fatima prayer has now been added, added to the rosary. I know Our Lady requested that at Fatima, but that's been added to the rosary even in our own lifetime. Also, in other parts of the world, there exists other customs where there are extra parts added to the rosary. At Lourdes, at the time that St. Bernadette received the apparitions of Our Lady, the custom in their village was always to add a sixth decade on every rosary, a decade for the holy souls in purgatory. And in, in actual fact, if you look at the big statue of Our Lady on, I think it's on top of the basilica at Lourdes, there you, there you have it. Our Lady has six decades on her rosary because that's just grew out of popular piety in Lourdes. It was, and in fact, Our Lady even appeared with those extra beads or so that architectural uh, representation shows it. But there's no reason to doubt that she did that. Our Lady acknowledged the local custom that had grown up around praying the extra decade for the Holy Souls in purgatory. I know some other people uh, that have been inspired to always add at the end of the Sorrowful Mysteries an extra decade in honour of the shoulder wound of Christ. 
And why not the Pope himself in order to, as Father Donald Calloway puts it, sharpen the sword of the rosary, make it even more powerful to combat particular errors in our day, add to the proposed mysteries of the rosary. Father Donald Calloway suggests things like the idea that marriage feast of Cana, that can help remind us marriages for between one man, one woman for life. Institution of the Holy Eucharist reminds us on the real presence. The baptism, the transfiguration, they both remind us of the divinity of Christ denied by false religions. And the proclamation I've got to say, for me, maybe the proclamation is a weak link of the mysteries of light. Maybe John Paul could have thought of another mystery instead of the proclamation. I don't know. Maybe feeding of the 5,000. Maybe one particular miracle our Lord did. It's the weak link of the mysteries of the light, of light, perhaps. But all the same, I accept it and I allow it to be a mystery in which I think about a particular aspect of our Lord's public mystery. So I do think about the feeding of the 5,000. or I do choose to think about the healing of the man born blind. Or I choose to think about our Lord instructing the apostles. Maybe that's why he, he made that the third mystery of light. So I think I've said everything I want to say about why I say the mysteries of light and why I think that they're a good thing to say, not an evil thing to say. Why I think that they're firmly supported by the tradition of the church, because the tradition of the church really going backwards, it didn't hold to 15 set mysteries of St. Dominic. It held to St. Dominic's method that you get a mystery of our Lord's life and then you think about that mystery and then you pray the Ten Hail Marys while you're thinking even further about that mystery. That's what St. Dominic did. That's how he converted the Albigensians. And of course, it makes sense for us to define the mysteries somewhat so we don't all go in a room and, you know, you say, OK, the first sorrowful mystery and then you say a mystery and, and, and everyone's thinking, oh, it's going to be the agony in the garden. And then you say, oh, it's the circumcision. That's not helpful. That's not helpful. We want to have some uniformity with the rosary. But also John Paul II saw following the inspiration of saints like St. Saint Louis de Montfort, St. Saint George Precker, servant of God Frank Duff, that it would be a good idea to enrich the rosary with some more mysteries. And he did it. And, you know, that's why I pray those mysteries every day, along with the other mysteries every day. And I think that all Catholics should aspire to doing the 20 decades every day, at least 20 decades. If you can do more, that's even better. I hope that people have got different comments and different responses to this video. I hope you've persevered in listening all the way through because actually it's turned out to be a real history lesson on the rosary and a real explanation of how the rosary existed in the life of the church. I hope you found this discussion helpful. May almighty God bless you. May our lady intercede for you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.